show. I am nature. I'm your host, Brian Porter. And first things first, folks, go to that TV and shut off your your uh, viewing of the presidential debate. OK, you got to do that first. This show is going to be much more interesting and much more important for the planet. I can assure you of that for tonight. We have I'm going to have three guests, although we're starting with two. Barbara Three Crow and Jean Paul the Baptist, I call him. They're all great native wisdom holders, keepers, and relayers. They, they really see the world of spirit very clearly. They interact with it. It's a, it's a daily part of their lives. And it's so important to delve into their views of the, uh, of the planet, of the mother, of what's actually going on here, what's sort of happening behind the scenes. So, Barbara, I wanted you to, um, I wanted both of these actually to start by just giving people a sense of uh, how you or when you first discovered that you sort of had this unique ability to connect with spirit. Well, hi, Brian. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I love talking with you and being a guest on your show. And um, Thanks, Barbara. Yeah. We have wonderful talks, really deep uh, talks, and so I know we'll we'll go into some very beautiful, amazing things tonight uh, with with the other two guests you have. And um, well, I guess I'd start. I was joking with you because I said it's going to be a long night if you're asking to tell the story, my story, and and uh, Jean Paul Baptiste. <laughs> Uh, am uh, I on? I'm just trying to connect here. Let me just grab Oh, okay. Okay, Daffy. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just bring her into the conversation. All right. She's not that late. No. Just on the edge. She was in her car when uh, I tried to hook up with her. Yeah. She's a fast driver, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully she's looking forward to coming on. We had... We had a brief discussion that lasted two hours and twenty minutes. It's I <laughs> they often do, right? <laughs> well, the three, the four of us. It was uh, yeah. Just take the. I mean, I should have just. I always I, tell you when we're talking, you get the tape recorder going. Yeah. <laughs> because there's some good talks we have behind the scenes. Oh yeah, and they can't be repeated. They're unique and powerful, fascinating and very very interesting. Well, yeah, some, some good stuff, but we'll have some t tonight too. So, okay, so I I'd say that um, I'm not sure if a lot of listeners would know this term, uh, but it, the word is a call, which is a C A U L, which means a veil. It's uh, people that are born with a call. Um, are said to have been given the gift of, as a visionary, um, a prophet, a visionary, uh, those who can see um, spirit, communicate with spirit, and see, um, I would say, the real stuff that's going on in the world. You know, you have the ability to see auras, I grew up like that. I was born into a lineage of my mother, my grandmothers, my great-grandmothers, um, who was uh, Nantachok, Lenape, Delaware. Um, and so they all had this gift. They were all born with it. So I was uh, in, re you know, receiving of that as well, the lineage and carrying that on. They knew that I had this ability you know, since I was born with a call. And my grandmother used to talk to the to the ancestors a lot. All of my uh, my mother, my um, my aunties. So I guess on the women's side, we had that was very strong. So yes, when I was a child, I could uh, see the realms, the, communicate with the spirits. I was very well aware of the beings and the ancestors. I had a lot of connectedness with them very early on, with the star people especially, um, and the little people also, and uh, many elemental beings. 
I have that ability to uh, what is called uh, be able to hear the spirit, the voice of spirit, communicate, communicator, an experiencer and a communicator. And I also a clairsentient where you feel other people's uh, pain or what is going on with them. So I read people. I have that ability. I guess you'd say there are many gifts that we most of us are born with. We are all given these gifts uh, where we have the ability to sense each other or maybe hear guidance. And uh, we start out that way, I believe, and some more so than others. But then oftentimes when we start out in our, on our pathway in life, they are very early. Um, it gets, uh, I would say, uh, dumbed out of us or we begin to doubt it because of the way society looks at that type of thing. I learned very early on to not talk about certain things that I see, saw or that I knew. I received prophecies and premonitions that were very difficult to deal with as a young person, you know. Uh, so I had to find my way. My grandmother was, uh, I was very close to her. She, I guess you would say she was my first teacher, but she died when I was 10. And so I didn't have a mentor. I uh, didn't have a lot of that, which I think is so important when you have these gifts. I call them gifts. When you know when people are talking that they're lying, when you can read the minds of people, when you see the auras, when you have mm -hmm. a premonition of something going to happen and it comes true, how do you deal with this type of thing, you know? So I started out very early in my life with this gift of connectedness to the spirit realm, to the other realms, uh, out-of-body journeys and travels, communications and guidance and so that's pretty much how I started uh, in life. I came here uh, from uh, the Pleiades. Uh, I, that was one of my um, source uh, origins. I'm one of them, the Pleiadine. I've always had the connection with the star people. Many beautiful miracles, I call them miracles, which uh, Creator, uh, Great Spirit, has gifted and blessed me with through um, various amazing things, um, you know. So, and talking or listening today to Daffy, a lot of her experiences and my own are a parallel, which is very fascinating. And uh, at one point in my life, I was being asked by guidance or spirit to take a turn on a different pathway in my life and I was very resistant and reluctant and asking why are you asking me to do this because I know nothing I know nothing I'm nobody I know nothing and they wanted me to begin to gather uh, women into teaching circles into circles they were saying this was a very important coming times in the earth changes and women needed to return to the circles and the teachings of the grandmothers. And I was uh, really, really questioning and uh, doubting myself. And so I'm happy the way I am. I don't, I don't want to do it. I don't know nothing. Why me? Why are you asking me? And then uh, this went on for two years. They kept saying, you must do this. This is what we want you to do. And then at one time they said, you're going to be diagnosed with breast cancer. And within that month, a couple of months, I found a lump in my breast and uh, went to the doctor and it was malignant. And during that time, I was in prayer and really uh, working with different things to work with energy, color healing, breath, and various things that I knew of what to do the best I could when I had a vision, I was given a vision and a, um, a being appeared to me and told me I needed to go into the mountains and search for a particular stone. And uh, I lived at that time here, I still live in Turtle Island up here in the Catskills and I lived beneath the area called the Manitou, 
which is a, a, a mountain area where the spirits live. We call it the Manitou. And I traveled up there uh, for a couple of hours searching and searching until I was guided to this landslide of rocks. And uh, there I found the stone. I was told this is the stone. And um, it had a surface like uh, it was almost a surface that was carved with a face on it. And I saw this being that was the exact being that came to me in the vision. And I was guided to go home and begin to paint certain markings on the surface as I saw in the vision. And during that time I was doing this, I left my body. I was transported into another realm. And there were many, many grandmothers there. And they were singing and chanting. And and all this while I was really so deeply affected by this and also not knowing what was happening, what was really going on. But when I finished uh, this uh, process, I felt uh, this inner peace, this amazing peace, and I was told that cancer is no longer now. And now, at this point, I knew that I had to make a choice. I believe we have, in our journey on the wheel of life, we've come to many points on our journey where we have two roadways, one this direction and one that direction. And we are at that point asked to choose. And I was there. I could choose to do what the spirits were asking me to do, or I could say thank you very much for the healing and now I'm just going to go on my way. That would have been a choice too. Um, would have brought me on a different journey in life. I wouldn't be here talking with you if I had taken that roadway, you see. So, but I did because I was so grateful and uh, honored and blessed that I received this healing from that spirit of that stone. And I'm a keeper of the stone spirits. I work with a lot of the, the stone people uh, and uh, the Wakan, Inya Wakan, they're called sacred stone people. And that's some of the things that I've been guided to do. So I started that journey and uh, led me to the fulfill a prophecy of the return of the sacred feminine and the harmony and balance between men and women, our brothers and sisters coming together at this time, in this timeline, because the breakup and shattering of everything that has been put in place for centuries by the dominator patriarchy cabal, the rule, is breaking up and being torn up and shattering. It's the time of transition into the new time, the new world, thousand years of peace, where we are to be connected again to in the tribal consciousness of our relationship with the Mother Earth, the love of our brothers and sisters together, walking into this new this new. Uh, paradigm. Just to give you a quick, uh, you know, brief synopsis of a beginning, a piece of, that was very important that brought me into this moment to speak with you uh, here on this uh, talk show. Wow, that was beautiful, Barbara. So, uh, Daphne, uh, Daffy, is it Daphne or Daphne? Daffy. Daffy. Oh, Daffy, I'm so glad you joined us. I was saying earlier that uh, we had the most incredible discussion. I should have taped it earlier in the day. But uh, Barbara's just sharing um, uh, sort of a, a bit of a, a very short summary of her um, her life and sort of what, what are the main messages that she's received from spirit. Uh, and uh, so I, I just asking each one of you to share that with the audience. Okay, well... Um, earlier, I was talking about um, the three stories that um, grandfathers asked me to share, and and they go together. I don't know if we have enough time for me to tell them. No. Uh, time no, they're they're beautiful stories. Uh, Jean Paul won't mind if if we has to uh, come in a little later because uh, I think they're very important stories to share with with everyone. You know, go right ahead. You know, uh, really uh, let um, everybody enjoy these uh, stories that you have. They're so beautiful. 
Uh, yeah, and get closer to your mic, Jean Paul, because I can barely hear it. You sound like you're uh, a million miles away. <laughs> <laughs> I am. How's that? So that's better. Yes. Okay. Okay, okay Daffy. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, I'll do my best to to tell the stories. Uh, I, I don't want to take up too much time. So, um, I guess um, the sort of the same way. Uh, a lot of us were brought into this world to uh, to be helpers, and there's so many. One of the things that the grandfathers had talked to me about, they said in every family there's one seer and there's dreamers, and they said these the people who are seers and dreamers were brought to help, to guide and lead and help out, and also to protect their own families and. And maybe in that time, there's a message from, for uh, everybody else. So during that uh, time when I was um, I was born like this, so I could see and hear spirits when I was, uh, ever since I can remember, there's sometimes people come up to me and they'll say, how does it feel? And I'm like, I don't know how it doesn't feel. <laughs> and like, I don't know. And uh, I was born like, so I don't know any other way. Um, and I'm thankful for my gift. I'm thankful for my grandparents helping me and uh, teaching me and for the many teachers that I had and for the the beautiful journey that, you know, my parents and my grandparents brought me on. They really put a lot of time and effort into uh, my learning and a lot of time with old people. Um, one of the things back home is when your children are not behaving, it's best to ha uh, have somebody else that they don't know to come in to discipline them. So, so uh, yeah, I had a lot of old people talk to me. So if you can guess, I wasn't very well behaved. <laughs> so <laughs> I had a lot of discipline. There was a lot of things that I didn't do right. And my parents would be like, oh, we got to go get an old person to talk to Daffy because she's not behaving right. So there, there, it was my discipline, but it was also my teaching. <clears throat> so in a way, I guess... Um, uh, it was a beautiful thing that, you know, I, I didn't behave at very well sometimes when I was a child, like most children, sometimes they get out of hand. And uh, so I was thankful for my parents to do that. So along the way, um, I was Oscar uh, Pesco, um, that means uh, helper of the lodges. And I worked with uh, uh, three different lodges helping out and learning, you know, it's also, um, you know, uh, uh, fasting and sun dancing since I was a little girl. So that was really helpful to me too. And the purpose of all of that is to help you to find your place. A lot of um, the confusion we have in this world, you know, we were all given a job from the creator and creator gave, the, gave us this job and we agreed with him while we were in the spirit world and he told us, this is your job and we made an agreement. We said, okay, I'll accept this job and I'll go. Sometimes we go off our path and we don't follow our job. There's a lot of people who uh, follow the Western world and, and they're not following their true calling their true job that they were given. And then we have a bunch of unhappy adults in their in their work. They're unhappy. They're not uh, fulfilled by the work that they're doing because they're not following their calling. So there's people who say, how do I follow? Uh, plain and simple. Put some tobacco down and say, God, creator, what do you want me to do with my life while I'm alive? And, and wait for the signs to come and follow. And also, you know, there, there's a lot of times, again, Western society really um, interferes in that where, you know, people say, oh, your average job, you should be a doctor or a lawyer or this or that. And um, also, you know, when your family's, uh, you know, been so pushed away from the natural world, the natural law, and pretty soon you have parents interfering. No, I want my child to be this. I want my child to be that. So, you know, I was thankful that my, my parents and my grandparents really pushed me on my path and helped me to find it, um, uh, what my job was and to, to work through it. So that would be something that I would advise, you know, a lot of people if they're unhappy with their lives and their work to ask what my job is. So I, I accepted my job and I accepted what was given to me. And I started to have these um I, I heard the spirits really clear. I could see them clear when I was a child. 
as I started to get older, uh, in my late teen years, I started to, I couldn't hear them really clear. They were like bumbles. One of the things I was told is that during that time, you're given the opportunity to choose what you want. And if you choose to go forward with your gift, then your gift will continue to grow. So at that time, I just, you know, I guess I had this idea. I just want to be like all the other kids. I wanted to be normal. And I kind of pushed it to the side. And during that time, I could still hear them, but they were mumbles. And I was told a ceremony was coming. Things were coming for me. And I was afraid. I didn't want to do it because I had witnessed some people who went off their path. And now, you know, not good things happen with them and their families. And I was worried that I would do the wrong thing. And uh, so uh, things started moving forward with the ceremony, with the teachings. And I didn't want to do it, even though they, all these things, these prayer items were coming to me. And I was like, no, I can't do it. I'm too scared. And one day I heard a voice about five months later said, um, you know, smoke the pipes. And I said, OK. So I did. I didn't even know how to do it. I, the Both of them were brought in. They said, there's no instructions. The spirits are going to teach you how to pray. They're going to show you what to do. So I said, OK. And uh, so while I was praying, I said, you know, I don't know anything. I'm a child and I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to hurt others. I don't want to hurt myself and I don't want to hurt the people around me. Sh Creator, show me the good way, the right way to do things. Because I've seen and witnessed things that didn't go right. And um, it was very shocking. The spirits started talking. I could hear them real clear uh, before they were mumbles. And as though they were standing beside me, but I couldn't see them. I started to take me around. They taught me how to smoke the pipe. They taught me how to do the altar. They started talking about sickness. And in the beginning, while they were teaching me these prayers, they were talking to me about the body, about the spirit. I didn't know, like, um, understand what they were talking about. I was like a little kid just copying them. They would say, say this prayer, do this. And I would just do it. And I was like, okay. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll just say it and I'll just do it. And uh, pretty soon, after a while, I started to understand that prayer. I started to understand what they were talking about. And I'm still learning that prayer to this day. It seems like it's not a very long prayer, but uh, if I was to tell the story of the prayer, it would be a really long story. So they started to uh, pick me up and take me in my dreams. And one of the first dreams I had, there's three of them, three of the main dreams. And in between the, these dreams, they were teaching me other things, but these were the main ones. So the first one, I was laying in my room. And I can, actually, the first one, I can't even say it was a dream because I was awake. So that wasn't a dream. Um I was laying in my bed and all of a sudden I felt somebody moving my shoulders and I could hear a voice and it was saying, wake up, wake up, grandchild, wake up. And I got up, they were rolling my body. I felt like a little kid getting woken up to go to school. And I sat up on my bed. Here I looked beside my bed. Grandfather was standing beside my bed and I, I had this plan. I was going to run away if I saw the spirits and the the strangest thing was like I knew in my whole life, like he was really my mushroom, like he was really my grandfather. And uh, I had no fear, not even one ounce of fear. All of my plans went out the window to run, to be afraid, and there was no fear. And he said, come, come, grandchild, we're going to show you something. And I, he said, somebody wants to see you. And I said, okay. And I didn't even finish saying the word okay. And we started traveling towards the east. We went to this beautiful, beautiful place. I, I couldn't even believe how beautiful it was. There's no words to describe what I felt where they took me. We traveled in this beautiful light. The next day when I woke up, I thought, this place where they took me, it's impossible. I, I went over it and I thought, how could I have no thoughts in my mind? How could my mind be empty? And how could I feel so much peace and love? Even the word peace is not even enough to describe what I felt. But we were traveling and we got to the end where we're going and I saw this big light. It was where we went. It was even brighter. And there was this mass light and it was moving. It was flowing. And I was looking at the light and grandfather was on my right and he said, Watch, grandchild, this is the beginning of how all creation came onto the earth. 
And I looked at him and I was so happy and I said, okay. All of a sudden I was looking at that light and a hand came out and it was flowing out and another hand came out and they were all made out of light. And the form of a man's body stepped out. His whole body was made out of light. And he put his hand where our heart is. And he grabbed a piece of his of his body, a piece of his heart. <clears throat> and he pulled it off. And he started to hold this light in his hands. And he started to talk to this light. And he was showing this light something. He said, look, look, this is your home. This is your family. This is where you're going. And he let that light go. It started going down really slow, really gentle. I wanted to see where this light was going. So I leaned over and I looked down where it was traveling. When I looked down, I saw Grandmother Earth and I saw the clouds. Later on, I thought, you know, Crater, if he wants to teach the deer, he probably comes in the form of a deer. Or if he wants to teach the flowers, he'll come in the form of a flower. So he came in the form of a man. And uh, so that I could understand than him and uh, grandfather said the very first thing that creator gave to us when he held us in his hands was love we were only brought onto this world with one emotion that's love he said <clears throat> everything else came out from there and he said creator also gave to us to know the difference of right and wrong we know when we do something wrong we feel bad we feel guilty we we do something good, something kind, something loving. We feel really good in our heart, in our spirit. He said, Creator also gave to us to know the difference of <clears throat> the truth and a lie. We know when somebody's lying, we can feel it. And we can also feel the truth in our spirit. When he told me this, I thought, that's how I could remember my real live mushroom telling me stories. Uh, and when I was a kid, he took us kids out on the land and we were gathering uh, sweet grass. And he was telling me prophecy stories. And, and you know, also he, in the wintertime, he was telling us creation story. And I used to wonder how could I remember that prophecy story and the creation stories. But I don't remember what I did at school. Because what he was telling me, it was the truth. That's why it never left me. And he said, Crater also gave to us to know when we are safe, when we are in danger. When you're in danger, maybe your body hurts. Maybe something says, slow down, and you miss a car accident. And, you know, uh, when you feel safe, maybe you have your partner. Maybe you have your best friend or one of your relatives. When you feel safe with somebody, your words fall right out of your mouth. You're not afraid to make a fool of yourself. You're not afraid to get angry. And you don't think before you speak when you feel safe. That's why oftentimes it's families who will say the worst things to each other because they know that no matter what they say, this person is never going to stop caring for them. And the dream was over. When I woke up in the morning, I couldn't believe what I saw. And in my mind, I, I kept on thinking, that's impossible. How could I feel like that? How could I possibly feel like, like, like I said before, the word peaceful is not enough to describe what I saw. And I always okay, Daffy, in, Daffy yeah. can we just stop you there for a sec? Because I'm yeah. getting comments from the other, uh, other uh, guests here, and I just want them to uh, chime in on this story. Okay, we'll okay. go yep. all three. But before we do there, I just want people to meet Jean-Paul Baptiste. And uh, Jean-Paul, just share a little bit of time uh, about your life. Yep. And when you discovered that you had special gifts. Um, hello, everybody. Hello, uh, Brian. Uh, sure, I can I can say that. For me, I always uh, was was different. You know, it's we always have that same story. Um, I like to say it was it was small little pieces of puzzles. You know, and yes, and they were visions, they were dreams, they were deja vu's, all of it, all my life. I always, uh, when I was a kid, I used to always uh, see uh, people. I used to uh, close my eyes and uh, the room would change, you know, a lot. And uh, and I, I used to remember, I used to, you know, don't get me wrong here, but I used to see uh, ladies and I didn't know why I seen ladies. And I was just, I was just a little boy. I was, like, you know, five or six. And I never knew why. And But they um, irradiated love. You know, great, great love, and 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 back then I, I lived in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, 
And it was definitely uh, uh, sad, I guess you can say, and lonely, you know, extremely lonely. And I never knew what was going on. I just, I just seen these. I was just a little kid. I, I never really uh, spoke to anybody about it. I just, uh, sometimes I would just forget the whole experience. And uh, yeah, some of the visions were um, horrible, you know. And then yes, there's fear, and uh, you know, when you're uh, six years old and you and you awaken, and then there's uh, the the room has a heartbeat and is breathing in and out. Yes, you know, you and you feel fear. Yes, something's in that room, and it's what's uh, scare the you know the craps out of you. you know, so you know, all these little things. Uh, dreaming, of course, is my forte, and. Uh, Visions and, and seeing, right? I, I do view, and so so all this is going on. You know, I'm I'm getting older. I'm, uh, you know, I have uh, lots of personal problems, like just like everybody else. You know, some some of it's yes, some of it's horrible. And uh, so I'm in I'm in Edmonton. Let's say uh, about six months ago. I'm in Edmonton and I'm thinking about my past and you know I'm I am getting kind of upset because I'm thinking about my past and how and how how alone I was you know I'm there you know and it's you know I'm I'm like oh I'm feeling I'm feeling really bad you know I'm, I'm not with my kids anymore me and my ex broke up and and so forth and so forth and I was just pretty much feeling sorry for myself and I was there I was like oh I'm so like I don't know you know I didn't know what to do. You know, you know, the economy's down, but I don't have a job, and you know, I can list a thousand things what was wrong with me. So I'm there in the room, I'm laying down, right, and I, you know, I'm thinking about my past and and everything else. How, you know, how how nobody cared, how was I was I was so alone when I was a child, but then I heard uh, I heard a little voice, and it and it says, um, "You were you were never alone." I was always here with you. And I looked and I felt it. And it was it was my heart. My heart was talking to me. And then all of a sudden, next thing I know, one second later, it just opened up. And I just like uh the inner peace, it was like, you know, it it uh it made me weep. You know, I was like in tears and I was I was in tears of of uh I wasn't. It wasn't tears of um, you know negativity. It was uh, tears of joy, and, and I thought to myself, "How could I have been so wrong all that time that I was alone?" You know. So that was um, one of the triggers in the beginning, right? And then so far, it has been uh, a miracle. Like how you know, I I cannot uh, describe it. You know. And it, like, it's on like a daily basis for me. You know, the great mystery always says something to me that's, you know, I walk around, it's, you know, my heart is, is uh, cleared. And, and it's not like I, you know, I just, um, I just, you know, I woke up one day and it was cleared. No, it was lots of uh, personal and deep uh, cleansing, you know, with my karma. It's, you know, it was a journey that, uh, that I was made to, I was uh, meant to have. Because after a while, yes, there's some more memories came to me. I was at, um, I was, uh, I had, I was just sitting there one time, and then all of a sudden, next thing I know, I was in front of a, a council of twelve, and uh, there was uh, the the sun. She was there. She was a female energy. She was kind of uh, leading this uh, this information. She was telling me. The Council of Twelve said they said um, we we sent you here many lifetimes ago. You know you you were planned to come here for to help humanity. You know, and I was like totally blown away. Like you know, am I you know you know am I losing my marbles here? But of course not. I wasn't because it was the, it was the truth, and I knew like um, like uh, Daphne says about uh, about the truth, right? You know, it was my heart truth. And you know, energy doesn't lie. You know, she 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 told me uh, who I am, and I was I was sent here. I was I was supposed to do exactly what I was supposed to do. You know, I'm here to to uh, one of the main reasons I'm here is to uh, reclaim our sacred sites in in a, anywhere. You know, they are we are dealing with 
you know, a negative uh, 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 geometry that holds our sacred sites, our 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 their spiritual uh, nexus that are you know they are supposed to be used to promote love. You know, they are our uh, mother earth's uh, uh, natural uh, beings, and that's what I'm here. I'm supposed to uh, identify them, and I you know I I lived everywhere in past lives. I remember lots of times in past lives. I remember. Lots of people from my reserve from North Balfour area, because that's where I'm from. This is uh, North Balfour, Saskatchewan. And that's what I do, you know, and I'm a healer. And uh, like how, how they mentioned about ceremonies, see, I was I was born um, outside of it so I can look in. You know, that's how that's how I was done. And as for, as for remembering myself, I remember um, a lot of things. You know, uh, I can go on forever and ever, but but uh, in in all honesty, you know, it's it's for me. I always tell you this too, Brian. It's it's all about um, remembering the heart, and it's so simple. And that, that's what I'm pushing, you know. But at the same time, I'm pushing other things, and I'm still clear, trying to clear the land. And yes, I I have identified uh, several places, you know, around in in and around uh, my local reality, and I you know I just want. Um, you know, to to help, basically. Okay, John Paul, I want you to hang on to that thought because I we'll get to that later in the show. That of course, yeah, trying to cleanse and a beautiful uh, summary of your past, and and uh, just I want to get back now to the beautiful uh, tale that uh, Daphne was uh, <clears throat> given to by her grandfather, or one of her ancestors, and and Barbara made a a comment <laughs> saying, "I have had the same experience twice." What were you referring to the the father figure and the light? I'm, yeah, I'm, um, I'm referring to being taken into that, that light, and um, yeah, it's, and uh, the way Daffy was saying, that, you know, it's difficult to describe, to explain, because there are no words to explain. We could say the love that I felt was love you've never experienced, or the peace that I felt was beyond imagining or the, the our words don't tell you really what that experience is and and um, I thought about my experience over the many many years um, first I thought oh I had been with God you know uh, that was as far as I could go <laughs> um, and and it was a like a miraculous experience, and um, I never told anybody about it uh, until years later. I told you know someone, but I reflected upon this experience because I've heard other people also share about this going into that place, that light, and the the uh, peace, the love uh, that you feel is is not an earth experience not an earthbound experience we love we feel love and we we do feel peace at times and we feel joy but that experience there is it's extremely different it's more you know as i said the words just fail me but here's what i came to feel and um strongly about after th reflecting upon this for many many years what was really happening, um, my experience, I would go back there because I'd, I'd really like to go back there. I didn't want to come back um, from that light. I was told I had to come back. It was time to go back. And I didn't want to. Uh, and I was told when I was coming back to the earth, into my physical self, I, I was told by spirit that no matter what, everything will be all right. And those words have stayed with me. Now, that was in my 30s, and I'm 73 now. And those words have, have often drawn upon those words. And um, But what I was reflecting about, to try to describe it a little bit more, um, in that place, in that light, you are free of fear, doubt, uh, guilt, uh, sorrow. It's not, it's non-existent. That's what I came to understand. I realized, wait, 
going back there, I felt I was only in braced within the love. And it's a profound love. It's, I guess you'd say, maybe divine love. I don't know. Those words are really meaningless. It's, again, it doesn't really tell you the peace and the joy and the love I felt. Um, what was missing was the worry, <laughs> the anxiety, the fear, the doubt, the guilt, the everything like that that we experience here on the earth, like earthbound experience in this human form, right? Because we're experiencing life, uh, but the spirit within us is uh, has the source of that love, that joy, that uh, peace. And uh, so when we're in that realm, in our true nature, I guess I call it, the, it's our source, it's our true nature, it's who we really truly are. And we're here, I feel, um, you know, to experience and come here, yes, to, to help to be in service, to, um, you know, to take part in, in helping each other. And we'd made an agreement. I totally, totally received that message as well. Made an agreement. And what was my purpose? What was the job I was to do here? I feel we all were given that job. We all made an agreement. And I totally agree with uh, Daffy when she described how people are living lives so unhappy uh, because they haven't really uh, found that um, job. I call it a job. Your your purpose or your you know what it is you're to be here for. You made the agreement with Creator before you came, and yet we get sidetracked and go on another journey and so on. And and you have sorrow. A lot of people are living um, sorrow, sorrowful lives, unfulfilled, and they're seeking and searching for something. And the something that they look towards or that they believe will help them or give them happiness is something material, material stuff. That's not going to give you that. It's not the fulfillment that is really, you know, is really uh, meant to be for them or us, for humans. So the material world is uh, false. It will not give you peace. It will not give you happiness or joy. So it's the uh, fulfilling that agreement of a, of a human, of a being here who is really so significant how important every human being is to the greater whole, how we all have a part to play in this great, um, you know, in the web of life and we're all significant there's not one person who is insignificant, and so um, yeah. So that that is was my experience with that um, going into that light. Uh, it happened to me when I was in my thirties, and also when I was a child, much younger. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, Daffy, I just a quick question. Uh, where you didn't say where you're from. Oh, I'm from uh, Sweetgrass, Saskatchewan. Where's that? Um, if you look at a map of Canada and you point right to the center of uh, Saskatchewan, that's where it is. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah, it's right in the middle of Saskatchewan. So for most people, that's pretty far north. Um, well, I don't know. I guess it depends where you are. For us, in, we're in the in central Saskatchewan. We're not... Uh, too far north. Right, right, right. But for most people who live on this planet, that's pretty far north. <laughs> uh, not yeah, too many people living so. north of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, no, you, you have a point, Brian. <clears throat> yeah. So, okay. So, okay. So this is a, an incredible story. Uh, I don't know if you've done this yet, but I suggest you write a book or you, you actually uh, do a video about this story. Um, I have a friend. What? What I, I was just telling them before the show, I have a friend, and what I do is I, I just, I make, I write a, like a script, I read it out, I have my uh, symbol in the back, my trinogetic symbol, and then she adds pictures and music to the story, and it makes the most incredible videos, and it's, it's all you need is a camera or uh, to do this, and it, it, I would suggest that you do that with these stories that you're telling, because they're so powerful, they're so full of, of the knowledge and the wisdom that we need to fix this planet. That uh, I don't know if you've done anything like that, but I think it would really help to get the message out to other people, and then I can help you share them. 
Yeah, for sure. And that's something that um, I'm working on right now. It's kind of a really slow process and I'm hoping to get a, a, a video done. I have some friends that have been working on it, but they're busy too. So I'm, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do about it, but I think I should just go forward and do the best that I can. <laughs> Right. Now, your, your signal's dropping yep. off a bit. If there's someone else in your home using the internet, I'd suggest that they not do it because you don't have a strong signal to start with and you're sort of breaking up a bit. So I don't know if there's any kids using the internet, but you're sort of, your signal's dropping in and out. Oh, okay. I'll go in. Uh, are the, are you the only one using the internet right now? Yeah, if somebody's streaming... Are your kids on the internet? Turn it off. Okay. Yeah, if you're sharing a connection. Yeah, it's going to be a problem. Okay. I'm, work I'm trying. I think my husband was streaming the movie. Oh, yeah, that'll really do it. Okay, now, could you hear me better? Yeah, that's clear. Okay, there we go. I turned it off. The Apple TV was on. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Awesome. Yep. Okay. So, um, uh, Jean-Paul, is there anything you want to say about her first story? Her journey? Um, no, it's amazing. You know, I, 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 I talked to her briefly and, you know, I, I always try to, uh, you know, communicate with her because uh, I'm too from the, the same area. I'm from Little Pine. It's the... Uh, just 25 miles away, roughly. And I do have relatives in Sweetgrass and, and this and that, and, you know, and definitely history. But, uh, yeah, they're amazing stories. I, you know, I, I know I know she's uh, very um, spiritual. And, and, you know, I'm sure uh, we'll, once we get to know her, she'll uh, definitely um, tell us more of this, uh, this mystery that she's been living. She kind of reminds me of Chico Xavier, um, <clears throat> the... Uh famous Brazilian psychic who recently passed away in terms of her uh, like I, I get thought I, I mainly live in a world of like uh, higher level ideas I don't see things like I wish I saw I mean spirit and stuff but I just get all sorts of ideas uh, that's how I connect but the, the fact that she's taken places and taken on journeys this is beautiful and this is this is all part of uh, of making this story have more of an impact on the listener oh yeah that's yeah. that's a, a beautiful aspect of your uh, story staffy and they're, they're very uh they're very powerful and they really they <clears throat> they get the attention you, you you become a very uh talented storyteller through them yeah well i'm thankful my my cook on my grandmother she was a storyteller so she kind of uh she had me try to get me ready for Storytelling uh, at a really young age, so I'm thankful for uh, her help with that. Beautiful. Okay, so you're still breaking up a bit, but we'll keep going. Um, so, what's the next big story that you were, or next big journey you were taking on? Okay. <clears throat> um, so probably about two months went by after that story, and I always walk around in my and I talked to people and um, I was walking in my dream and grandfather came and found me in my dream and he said come come grandchild we're going to show you something and I said okay we started walking towards the south I was walking behind him I was following him and I can see the land I can see the grass it was it was evening time and the sun was setting we walked quite a ways. I was following him. Finally, we got to this place <clears throat> where we were going. And when we got there, um, I looked where we, where we were. Here, I saw this perfect circle on the ground. There was only me and grandfather there. Perfect circle. Inside the circle, there was a fire. A small fire, not a big bonfire, just a small fire. I saw a lot of bright red coals and I saw flames and it wasn't a high fire. And grandfather said, we're going to show you something, but we want you to go back and tell the people. And I said, OK. And uh, I was looking at him while he was talking. When I turned around and looked back to the circle here, there was a whole bunch of old. 
I can see their clothes. I can see their beadwork. They were all standing around this circle. There was no empty space in the circle. And <clears throat> grandfather, he started pointing at the fire. And he said, look, look, grandchild. He said, this is love. We were only brought onto this world with one emotion. That is love. And he started pointing at the fire with his finger and, and, and making it an emotion like the shape of a cane on both sides, both of his hands. And he said, we we're only brought here with one emotion. That's love. Everything else came out from there. And he said, why do people get mad? Why are they angry? He said, the people, they get mad and they get angry because they love themselves, because they love someone, because they love an idea or because they love their life's work. He said, anger cannot exist without love. It's impossible. He said, we want you to go back and tell the people when they're mad, when they're angry, if they can go somewhere, maybe on the land, if they can and to tell god creator i'm so mad today creator i'm so angry and i ask you to take this anger from me today so that i don't hurt the people around me and i do not hurt myself and yell cry scream if you have to throw yourself on the ground and kick yourself around that's what you have to do to get this anger out of your body every single one of us our true spirit Spirit is so beautiful and it's so pure and so clean and this beautiful pure clean spirit inside of us is what is trying to push the anger the worry the fear the doubt the lies the greed the manipulation it's trying to throw these all out of the body but the people keep pushing them back down he said every sickness in the body is an emotion not being let go he and then he pointed to his eye and he said Every tear that falls from your eye, that sadness, that's loneliness, that's frustration, it's leaving the body. Okay, beautiful. Thing. And he said, We're just coming up on a break yeah. now, so let's everybody mute. <laughs> Welcome back to I'm Nature. I'm your host, Brian Porter. <laughs> and tonight I have three great native spiritualists on with me. Uh, before I get back to uh, uh, Daffy's next story, her beautiful uh, journeys that she's taken with uh, grandfather, I wanted to uh, uh, put out a, uh, a request that people uh, purchase the archives of uh, Revolution Radio. I think it's the, the best way to uh, raise money for the station. It's only $5 a month. You, you uh, learn in the process, you become enriched, and it also enriches the station, and it's also the cost of, God, you know, Starbucks, a cup of coffee nowadays. So it isn't a huge sacrifice to make, but I'll tell you, if everyone gave $5, we'd never, ever have an issue with money at this station. And believe you, every month, it's always a, a grind to get in that $2,000. We need to support 80 programs on two formats. So please consider getting the archives. Check out the donate page. I think there's a deal too on pinto beans. Believe it or not, Mike Mike has uh, just ordered hundreds of pounds and he's uh, reselling them to try to make a bit of money too. And Mike's the station owner. So there's my there's my fundraising plea for the station. And so let's get back to uh, the beautiful story of uh, Daffy's uh, from grandfather about the circle of uh, coal in the in the. Um, on the ground and it represented love and uh, to some extent anger. So Daphne, did you finish the story? The last thing you, you talked about was the, was the crying. Oh, and, and, um, it, I'm just about done the story. And grandfather was pointing to his eyes and he said, uh, every tear that falls from your, from your eyes, he said, that's sadness, that's loneliness, that's frustration, it's leaving your body. And he said, but the people are stopping themselves from crying. And it's true what grandfather said. People have all of these, <clears throat> you know, reasons not to cry. I can't cry because I'm a man. I can't cry because I'm at work. I can't cry in front of my kids. I can't cry because it's a stranger. I can't cry because I'm in a public place. And you can actually physically feel when you have that lump in your throat and you swallow it. You can actually physically feel <clears throat> sadness traveling back down into your body if you when you don't cry. And he said, <clears throat> we want you to go back and tell the people society today is not right. Society today is telling the people your ultimate goal is to be happy 24-7. And he said, this idea is really hurting the people. And it's true what grandfather said. People, you know, uh, think 
in this time and day, oh, I must, there must be something really wrong with me because I'm not happy. Or I must have a lot of problems because I'm not happy. I've not met one person who is happy 24-7. Um, to, for me, I consider a full day. I, I consider that I had a good day when I cry, when I laugh, when I'm sad, when I'm happy, when I'm grateful. When I have many emotions, that's when I think that was a good day of work on myself. So um, the last story, I don't know if we have enough time for the last story. Well, before you reflect on the last story or share it, I, I like to just go story by story and then get some feedback. Uh, the, the, the issue of crying, I remember how touched I was, uh, Barbara Three Crow and I were talking, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, about her uh, uh, having a ceremony, I think with some other friends, and trying to help the, um, the, the honeybees and, and the, the insects to recover from the assault, uh, many assaults on them. And uh, then she read a story about uh, spraying and it killed uh, millions of bees and, and she, she broke out into tears. And I was so, I was so touched by um, her connection to nature and the fact that it made her cry. I just, I just wanted to share that. And then it, when you cry about something as important as, as Mother Earth being hurt as she is now, it, it shows that you, you really have character. And you really have a good connection. Yeah. Do you want to comment well, on that, Barbara? I'm sorry. What what you, <laughs> what was your question? I heard what you said, but I was I was muted. And oh, okay. I just wanted to, if you wanted to comment on the story I related about our discussion. When you start, you burst into tears. You were so upset about all the honeybees dying. And you know, it's um. I do weep. I weep a lot around the mother, what's happening to the mother and the waters, the water people. The, I just do. I cry. So it just, I feel the sorrow and, and the, how wrong this is and how beautiful gift everything in creation was given as a gift to us and how we're just carelessly and destroying and hurting everything it's just but I feel you see I feel the pain I feel the pain of the innocence um, the innocent ones you know and they love us you know the mother is feeding us the bee people are so crucial for our survival and the water people everything everything is in relationship to the whole we're part of that if you hurt something about the mother, the waters, it, we're hurting ourselves and our children. And but I actually feel the pain in my body. I feel the, such a sorrow. And um, yeah, so I do often cry. Uh, the tears just flow out of my eyes. Um, yeah. So we're in a, a, a lot of uh, in our ceremonies. Um, we're really praying for the. Um, I guess I, I often say, let the people be touched by, uh, let their mind, their heart, and their spirit be touched and awakened to um, how important it is to nurture and to take care of this most sacred gift that we were all given. Everything. The, you know, the creeper crawlers, the wingets, the water people, everything. And the standing ones, the tree people, the forest, and, and all that we are just carelessly neglecting and destroying. And we're all a part of it. It's not them and we're different. We're all a part of it. And that's the really painful thing. And I just feel that, you know, we never really needed to create anything. We didn't need to build a better something. Everything here. We were gifted every food we needed, every, the water, the clean water, the air, every medicine we needed, everything. This was the gift, the blessing to give to us, uh, this life here on the Mother Earth. And, uh, yep, yeah, so we're um, talking about this more and more and more. How can we um, shift things uh, back to the original one of the original agreements I feel was that we agreed to be stewards of the mother and all of creation here to be respectful to be caring 
to think of the next coming generations, what we are leaving for them and everything that, of course, that we do now will affect our children, our grandchildren, and so on. And so we are doing a lot of prayers for the waters and uh, everything like that. So, yeah, it's there, we're living in a really crucial time, a turning point here, at, you know, at this time. We're all part of this... Uh, I guess I say well, maybe we all came back here. That was part of our agreement to come back here at this time so that we could help uh, the situation. You know, that's, uh, yeah, so that's what it is. Thank you. Yeah, you say that in one of your uh, videos that uh, a lot of people have forgotten why they came here. Why we came. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's for sure. <laughs> I totally agree. Al Jean Paul, what do you have to say about the last um, uh, story? That. Um, oh yeah, of course. You know, it's it's uh, it's you know when you're when you're working with the spirit, it gets really personal. On on so many uh, levels and layers, you know, and it's you know you have to express yourself, you know, and that's and that's how we heal, you know, when you when you drop all these uh, feelings. And you just you know let it all out, and that's that's how we heal, you know. And I, I I recognize that a lot a lot of time, even with myself, you know, I had lots of moments of this you know awakening, and it's like whoa, like I've been so wrong, and it's like you know it's really like I said, it's very emotional, and I you know I I really enjoy these uh, her stories, it's, you know, it's stories of the heart. I love them. I have. Um one more thing that I'd like to uh, share about the crying. Um, yes, and because it's, we're so, uh, you know, uncomfortable or we feel ashamed to show emotion or to cry. Um, and uh, I remember one of the grandfathers saying to me, you know, when you're really crying and the snot is pouring out of your nose and you're just hunkered over there weeping and weeping. He said, you know, that is really a powerful prayer. So I always thought that was kind of very sweet. When the snot is pouring out of your nose, then you're really praying. <laughs> wow, that's, that's, oh, that's a very interesting perspective. I've never really thought of it that way. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's part of uh, being alive. I mean, that's one of the reasons I think we're here is to experience all the different range of emotions and feelings. And uh, but I love the idea that everything starts with love. I think that that is uh, crucial. That's the foundation of of all of all <clears throat> enlightenment and uh, reality. It's the real world when you're living in the love center. And I, I just want to comment m myself on, uh, I know, I remember, I, I, you know, I basically focus a lot of my energy on, on steadying problems. I mean, eco problems, and I call them the planet killers. And it, it can get depressing. I remember one night, uh, I basically cried all night, because I was so upset. And uh, it was my way of just letting it all go. And, and, uh, but it's actually very healthy. If you don't, if it doesn't upset you, what's happening here, then nothing's going to change. It has to, you have to feel it at a visceral level. Um, or, uh, you know, it has to really disgust you. And it certainly motivates one to say, hey, you know, I, I'm going to do what I can do to make a difference. So maybe that's what, maybe that's one of the big issues here is that people are not feeling they see things really devastating things happening and they don't have an emotion about it they don't feel it they're so numb uh, about these things you know is it because it's just packed on us one thing after another after another of very difficult and painful things horrific things that we see that you become numb you know um and yeah, if people really were in tune and touch and in touch, they would weep or they should weep. I don't know. I hate to use that word should, but you'd think that they would weep, right? Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. That, the video I made about making a difference TV, I mean, if you realize 
that your nature and you look at around. I like the analogy of the of the the baby and the mother when the, the baby's on the breast and we're sucking uh, off the breast, right? All babies do this, hopefully, hopefully. You know, I wasn't breastfed, but thank God most kids are at least breastfed nowadays. Um, and then, then when the breast is gone, you put the earth there instead. And then you're sucking in all these toxins. I mean, this is the way, these are the simple images that will hopefully wake people up and say, just because you're not sucking on the breast doesn't mean that you're not sucking in all the toxins that are that we're putting out there. And these are the kinds of powerful images that I think will help people realize that we have to stop doing this. That there really, there's no need to emit toxins for us to live here. Every, as you said earlier, we have everything we need. We always had everything we need. And they're taking away what, the basics now. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's a real mess. But anyways... Um, let's get back to the third story because I, I find that these stories are very impactful and very powerful and, and they kind of summarize in a lot of ways, uh, you know, the knowledge that we have to bring back here. So Daffy, could you share us the third big story that, that grandfather told you? Okay. <clears throat> so on, uh, the last story I was working in, I've been working in a, Maximum Security Youth Jail and an Open Custody Youth Jail for about seven years. And um, when I first got asked to work there, I didn't know what I was going to do because I only went to Western school for, till grade nine. I wanted to uh, learn the traditional way. So that's what I spent my life uh, uh, focused on, learning the traditional uh, uh, traditional ways and being with elders and ceremonies. So... Um, when they called me, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do, but I had put tobacco down three days earlier and I said, well, creator, I think, uh, you might have another job for me. If you have another job for me, uh, I'll take the job and I put the tobacco down and three days later, the jail phoned me and they said, we heard about your work. Can you come work for us? And I said, okay. And, uh, I didn't quite know what I was going to do. So I pulled up there and, um, and I said, you know, Crater, I put tobacco down, asked you where you wanted me to work. I got the phone call, but I don't really know what I'm doing here. What can I do for these boys? Uh, I only went to school to grade nine. I have no real Western education, but uh, I know I'm here for a reason. And um, I, I was praying, you know, tell me what to do. Show me what to do, Crater. And all of a sudden, real clear, I could hear my dad's voice and my grandmother, and they both passed away long ago. And I could hear them, and, and I heard my dad and my Gukum saying that they said, treat all children the way you would treat your own child. Never treat another person's children different than you treat your own. If you're mean and you're nasty to somebody else's child, somebody is going to be mean and nasty to your child treat all children the same, love all children the same. So I thought, okay, that's what I'll do. I'll teach these kids the same stories I tell my kids. I will uh, talk to them the same way I talk to my kids. So that's all I know. So I went and I started teaching the boys how to pray, telling them the same stories I tell my kids. And uh, uh, I was working there, I think that time, probably about three years. And... Uh, yeah, about maybe two or three years. And this one young guy, he was there from the first day I started working. And he said, I need your help. Could you help me? And one of the things that my dad taught me and my Gukum, they said that never be afraid to say you don't know. They said, if you tell somebody, you know, something that you don't know anything about, you can confuse people. You can hurt them. So they said, always, you know, don't never be afraid to say I don't know. And tell them you'll pray, you know, um, for them to find the help that they need. So um, I said, I don't know if I can help you. First, you have to tell me. Maybe I can. Maybe I can't. I don't know. And he said, okay, I get out of jail in two months. And I said, oh, wow, I'm so happy for you. Holy. And uh, he looked at me real serious and he said, you know, I've been here eight years. I was so shocked. I said, how could you be here eight years? This is a jail for 18 and under. How old are you? He said, I'm going to be 20. I got to finish my childhood sentence here. And he said, uh, can you tell me what I need to do when I get out of jail to ask God creator to forgive me for what I've done. He said, I'm here for manslaughter. I killed a man. 
So I started counting back and I thought, oh my God, he was only 11 years old when that happened. And right away I could hear my, my uncle's voice. Don't talk about something that you don't know anything about because you can hurt people. You can confuse them. And I told him right away, I said, I cannot speak about this. I cannot talk about it because I don't know anything about it. But what I can do for you today is I'm going to pray that God creator, he's going to guide you. He's going to lead you to somebody who knows about this. And this person can help you. And he said, okay. And I told him, <clears throat> did you see your mom and dad while you were here? And he said it really happy, but it was so sad. And he said, I don't have a dad, but I have a mom. And he said, my mom came to see me four times while I was here. And oh, it was sad. And, and I said, you have brothers and sisters. I have six brothers and sisters. Have you seen them while you were here? He said, no, the only person of my whole family that came to see me was my mom. And she came to see me four times. He said, I don't even know how my brothers and sisters look. And he said, I'm really scared to get out of jail. He said, how do people dress? How does it look out there? And we continued talking and I hugged him because that, you know, in the next day, me and my husband were going to be traveling to his homeland, Haida Gwaii, and we were going to be there for two months to go and um, uh, pray with the people. So when the day he got out of jail, I, I would still be in BC. So I told him, I won't be here when you get out, but I'll continue praying for you everywhere I go. So he said, okay, I gave him a hug. I left my work that day. <clears throat> when I got out to my truck, I didn't think I was going to cry. But when I got to my truck, I closed my truck door. And as soon as I closed my truck door, this loud cry came out of me. And I couldn't even believe that I cried like that because I didn't even cry like that when my dad died. I never even cried like that when my cookum died. And... Uh, and it was strange because my body was crying, but my mind was thinking something different. In my here, my body's crying, but in my mind, I'm thinking, "Why are you crying, Daffy? Stop crying!" But I couldn't stop my body. My body kept crying, but my mind was thinking something else. And I cried all the way home. When I was getting close to Sweetgrass, there's a hill there on the sign. It says Prongy Hill. But your grandfathers told me, they said, this hill is called where the baby eagles learn how to fly. While I was coming up that hill, I started to get mad. And I got mad at God. I got mad at grandfather. And I said, creator, I said, grandfather, I said, how come people are always saying that we come from one of the most peaceful people? How come they're always saying that we lived in harmony with all creation? Is this even a true story or is it a lie? Because how is it possible all of these boys that I work with in this jail came from peace and harmony? There's how many boys in there in there for really, you know, awful, awful crimes. Boys in there for armed robbery, manslaughter, uh, you know, shooting, stabbings, all kinds of things. And and there's no place for a child, you know, and, and I kept crying. There was no answer. I cried all the way home. When I got home, I told my husband what happened and he hugged me and he said, go lay down. He said, I'll feed the kids. And I said, okay. I went in a room and I was still crying really loud and I cried myself to sleep. When I fell asleep, grandfather came. Grandfather said, come, come grandchild. We're going to show you how the world was divided. And I said, okay. And he took me and we flew around the world for times really fast I saw land I saw animals I saw people I saw places we traveled all over the world and all of a sudden we stopped really fast where we stopped when we were moving so fast I went forward a little and I stood up I knew we were on the other side of the world I saw a big hill of sand in front of me I looked to my right sand everywhere look to my left sand we were in a desert on the other side of the world and sometimes when I tell this story, people think it's about Jesus. It's not about Jesus. I believe in Jesus and I've seen Jesus before. And uh, this story is not about Jesus. It's about the negative one. And grandfather said, the negative one, the evil one, 
He wanted somebody to listen to him instead of God creator. So he came to these people and he lied to them and he went all over the world and he lied to many people. And he said, God sent me to teach you about God. He said, did you know that God loves the human beings more than he loves anything else in creation? That you are his children and he loves you more than anything. He said, look up in the sky. You see all of those birds. Did you know God made all of those beautiful birds just for human beings? Because you are his children and he loves you more than anything. He said, you see the fruit, the vegetables, the medicine, the plants. God made all of that just for human beings. Because you are his children and he loves you more than anything. The four-legged, the winged one, the insects, the water creatures, the plants, the trees, the rock. God made this whole world just for human beings because you are his children and he loves you more than anything. Grandfather said, pretty soon, grandchild, they started to believe his lies. <clears throat> and pretty soon they started to believe that they were more important than anything else in creation. And they started to destroy everything all around them without care because they believed that they were more important. He said, when the human beings became to believe this lie, he said, the human beings were taken from the rest of creation and they were put in a place all by themselves. He said, this is the reason why today the human beings are walking around. Why am I alive? What is my purpose? I feel like I don't belong. I feel like I don't have a home. I feel like I don't have a family. And he said, and they're always constantly searching. They're always looking for something. He said, what they're truly searching for is to belong back in creation, to be equal with the four-legged, the winged one, the insects, the water creatures, the plants, the trees, the rocks, and all human beings. When creator took a piece of his heart and he held us before he sent us to our families, he also held all of the four-legged, the winged one, the insects, the water creatures, the plants, the trees, the rocks. An ant is very small, but their spirit is the same size as ours. A tree is really tall, but their spirit is the same size as ours. All creation was given the exact same size spirit. There's no spirit that is brighter or bigger. They're all given the same size spirit. We have different physical bodies, but the spirit is the same size. After that, we started to travel again. This time, we went to visit all the colors of the people all over the world. Grandfather said, next grandchild, the evil one, the negative one. He went to all the colors of the people all over the world, and he went and lied to them. He said, hey, you white people, you're different. Hey, you black people, you're different. Hey, you red people, you're different. Hey, you yellow people, you're different. You guys are all different. He said, pretty soon, grandchild, they started to believe this lie. No, the white people, they're better, they're stronger. No, the black people, they're better, they're stronger. No, the red people, they're better, they're stronger. No, the yellow people, they're better, they're stronger. He said, from this lie is where all the wars in the world started. He said, human beings are the only thing in all creation that separates by color. He said, nothing else in creation separates by color. And when grandfather told me this story, I didn't quite understand because everything he talked about, I was guilty of it. I always thought, I don't belong here. This is not my home. I'm never going to come back to my community. Um, I'm strange. I'm like an outcast. And Native people are better the way we praise. But everything he said, I was guilty of it. The next day, he, he knew I didn't understand. And he told me, grandchild, go to your mom's house. And sometimes I'm not a very good grandchild. Uh, my dad told me, speak to spirits the same way you speak to anybody. Don't be different for them. And I told grandfather, you're always sending me all over, all the time. I said, no, still sending me around. Now what? And he, and grandfather wasn't happy with me because I wasn't listening. He started raising his voice. He said, grandchild, go to your mom's. And I said, okay. I told my kids, wait, I'll be right back. My kids were saying, but we were going to go to town. I said, just wait. So I started driving to my mom's and I was real miserable driving. Eh? Oh, these spirits are always sending me somewhere. Now what? <laughs> I was driving real miserable. Grand grandfather said, no, drive this way and stop there. Get out. Start walking. And I was walking really mad. Eh? And I thought, oh, these spirits are always sending me somewhere. Now what? And then he said, now stand there. Don't move. And I thought, oh, I better quit getting mad and see what creator and grandfather are trying to teach me today. 
And I looked, he took me to my mom's pasture where her horses are. I saw a white horse, I saw a black horse, I saw a red horse, I saw a yellow horse, I saw a black and white and brown horse, I saw a yellow and white horse, I saw a gray horse. And you don't ever see horses saying, hey, white horses on this side of the pasture, black ones on this side, red ones over here and yellow ones here. Because you're all different. A horse is a horse. It doesn't matter what color. Oh, I think we lost her. Hello, yeah. can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. So there. Uh, we just lost. Okay. You were talking so the, about the color. The the horses don't really care what what color each other is. Yeah, that's where we lost. Yeah, and they're a family, and they take care of each other, and that's how the human being should be. And we are the only thing that separates by color. Nothing in creation separates by color. Only human beings. After that, we started traveling. This time, we came to Turtle Island. In this dream. There, the one that I call grandfather that showed me how to pray, taught me to pray, taught me the stories, and who, who took me on all of these travels, they call him Mr. Helmasqua, the one they call Chief Big Bear. That's the spirit who taught me how to pray and who has taken me on all these journeys. <clears throat> and there was grandfather and there was uh, Mr. Helmasqua, sitting bull, Geronimo, and crazy horse. And we were walking on Turtle Island. We were walking and <clears throat> grandfather said, next grandchild, the evil one, the negative one. He went to all the tribes all over the world. He went and lied to them. He said, I know all the tribes all over the world of all the tribes I've seen. He said, oh, your tribe is the best. Everything you guys do is the best. The way you guys pray is the best. You know what? All the other tribes, they should be like your tribe. And they should pray like you. Grandfather said, pretty soon grandchild they started to believe his lies no not that church no not that bible no not that sweat no not that ceremony he said they're so busy arguing over which one is the right one that they won't even stop and pray together he said before this lie came about he said when there was a crisis on the earth he said a representative from each tribe, they came together and they prayed in their own way, the way that was given to their family from the beginning of time. He said, from the beginning of time, all of our families, we were given ceremonies, we were given prayerful way. And he said, we have a head keeper, a head women for our whole families that covers the whole family. Then we, each of us, we have our own. He said, that's how we followed by our guemes, by our keepers. And uh, he said, but it's not happening anymore because the people are too busy fighting over which one is the right one and then we started traveling again this time we went to all the reserves the villages the communities grandfather said next grandchild he said the evil one the negative one he went to all the families in the reserves the villages the communities and he went and lied to them he said i know everybody in your whole community i know everybody in your whole village of this whole community this whole village he said oh your family's the best everything you guys do is the best the way you guys pray is the best you know what all the other families in your community they should be like your family and they should pray like you he said pretty soon grandchild they started to believe his lies and the community started separating they stopped working together and he said, oh, that negative one, that evil one. He was so happy. He said, look, look what I did. I divided the world and I only told four lies. They believed me. He said, well, I'm going to lie some more. I'm going to tell some more lies. He said, oh, in this tribe, the women are stronger. No, the men. No, the women. No, the men. No, the women. Pretty soon they divided the male and the female in the eyes of the creator and the grandmother earth. <clears throat> it doesn't matter what color your skin is. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what kind of a family you come from. We are all creator and grandmother earth's children and they love all of us the same. I have four children. If I love one of my children more than the other, I'm going to hurt the other three. So I had to learn how to love my children equally. And if one of my children does wrong, I don't stop loving them. That's still my child. And that's the same way Creator and Grandmother Earth love us. They love us equally and they love us unconditionally. And you know that part about the male and female. One day, one of my friends came and uh, she's quite loud and I was really praying for my food and elderly lady said I always pray when you're cooking so I was really praying and she comes in really loud and she says oh it's the time of the women 
the women are finally taking their rightful place. And I was really quiet. I said, yeah, yeah, I believe that because I was praying while she was talking. And she said, women are stronger. Women are more powerful. And I looked over. My husband and my son were sitting at the table. And both of them raised their eyebrows at me and like, aren't you going to say anything? And I turned around and I put the, the spoon down because I didn't want to put anger into my food. And I stepped back and I said, no. I don't believe that. And I said, for you to come into my home and to say women are more powerful than men, I said, you are looking down on my husband and you are looking down on my son. And in my home, I am equal to my husband. I am also equal to my children. I will not allow you to speak that way in my home. You know, we, it has to be a balance because the world went from Oh, male dominance, and all of a sudden the women are trying to say, no, the women are smarter. No, no, no. It has to be about balance. Because we've seen what happens when there is an imbalance, and we cannot jump over and start to say women are more powerful. A woman cannot have a child without a man, and a man cannot have a child without a woman. We need each other. We are equal. So it's, it's a beautiful journey to understand the, the power of love, to understand the power of ourselves and where we belong in creation, be equal to the four-legged, the wing one, the insects, the water creatures, the plants, the trees, the rocks. Yeah, okay, okay, D Daffy, that's a beautiful story with so many important uh, lessons in it. I just, I just, uh, I love your stories. Um, yeah, one of the main themes being the separation based upon this notion of superiority. I, I see that everywhere too. And uh, but I just wanted to let Barbara or uh, Jean Paul comment about those uh, about what what really uh, um, <clears throat> what sort of uh, impression this beautiful uh, journey she took with grandfather had on them. Why don't you start, Barbara? Yeah, thank you. Um, beautiful. I was just saying that the story is very. Um, it's our, it is definitely our story. <laughs> we all know that story, um, how the something, I guess we'll calling it the evil one. Um, I, there are many names, many words people use for that, making that um, separation was the key piece, creating the separation of the people as we were all one family, children of the earth, we were all children of the earth. Uh, I've always felt that very strongly. And the hatred and the violence and the prejudices is, is a very strong imprint. Um, we're not born with hatred, we're not born with prejudice. We have no idea what that is. Uh, and when you see little children together, it doesn't matter. Um, they're not saying, oh, I'm not going to play with that little girl there or that little boy because of the color of their skin. They're just so free and uh, beautiful and joyous to be together with other children and they'll play um, with that uh, sense of, you know, joy and um, freedom. They don't, they don't have that judgment. We're not born that way. That is, that comes through many, many generations embedded in the minds uh, and, uh, of the people. And um, <clears throat> it's an old, an old uh, piece, very old, happened <clears throat> a long time ago, I feel. And it's very sad because we're in that so strongly right now. Today we see this escalating separateness, hatred and violence against uh, people of color. It's always been there, but today this is being deliberately accelerated. Um, <clears throat> my question, my question is, why is this happening so strongly, so prevalent now at this time? Uh, <clears throat> and um, I feel that it's because we are in a sacred time, a time of transition and change, uh, which I feel is meant to return ourselves, come back to the family, the children of the earth, all sacred children one big family of many, many colors, the rainbow people. And that it's about returning to that balance and harmony, walking side by side and respecting and caring for each other, loving each other. Um, 
you could call it a partnership, being in partnership with each other. So I think that this, because this is prophecy uh, that I received, the prophecy of this time is about the return of that connectedness between the men and the women, that healing that we need. We need to heal this between us, otherwise we, we cannot survive like this anymore. This hatred and this violence is killing us, not only physically, but our spirit as well. And it's hurting our children too. So this is, prophecy time says, this is the point where we are to return to that uh, balance and harmony. The fifth world, thousand years of peace is the prophecy. And uh, so I question how come now that this prophecy is meant to unfold that now suddenly comes roaring down the pike this escalating violence and <clears throat> uh, attitude, this separateness, this prejudices, killing and violence and uh, hatred. And I feel that it's because, um, <clears throat> you know, when you have a position that you've held your territory, you've staked your claim for a long, long time, and somebody comes along and says, you know, I have a better idea, I have a different idea, I have an important idea. This is the idea. This is a sacred idea. This is a time that will be helpful. This is a time of renewal. This is a time that will help all, the whole, all people. That one or ones who had staked the claim with their idea, their position, they're not going to give it up so freely. So they're going to raise the stakes. They're going to really push hard to keep their position, to keep that negativity, to keep that hatred, to keep that violence, separation going. It served their purpose but it doesn't serve anybody anymore. And so <clears throat> I feel that there's this jockeying for position along that line, and it's up to us, really, to come to love each other, you know, to know that we are all the same. We all have a heart, we all have a liver, we all have kidney, we all have eyes, ears. We're all the same. We have uh, beautiful different colors, which is a rainbow. If you want to say rainbow colors, rainbow warriors, creator loved diversity, you know, and uh, many things uh, are created like that. So I feel that this is what's happening um, about that, the hold, that uh, staking the claim to keep the separation and the violence going against each other and where many people have just fallen into that pattern and... Um, you could call it a brainwashing. It doesn't really matter. But this time now, we have to come back to loving each other and seeing each other. Um, brothers and sisters, we're all really the same. We all want love. We all want peace. We all want food. We all want good, clean water and for our children to be safe. Everybody, doesn't matter who you are, what your religion is, what your color is, what your background is. Everyone wants the same and deserves the same too. So that's that's what I feel on that. Yeah, thank you. Beautiful, Barbara. Okay, and Jean-Paul, what? Uh, anything you want to add to that? Uh, yes, um, I just want to thank uh, Daphne for her uh, beautiful story and Barbara too for her uh, comments. I like to um, how I look at it. I, uh, I I can see yes, there is a a dark agenda that really puts us in the groups, on these groups, but but how do we, you know, see these groups? How do we see all this negative uh, uh, grouping of, uh, of people and, and everything else? And, and that's by um, asking the right questions, because our questions are basically linked to our awakening of our, of our hearts. You know, and you are the total sum of these questions, basically. So... So, um, so you know, how do you how do you break out of it? It's by reaching the heart, and is by it's by clearing it. And I know I do sound like a parrot, <laughs> and it's true because you know we we all have these uh, 
these uh, factors that that key in that you know trigger us and and how we um, how they say it is um, we have to uh, we always react. You know, you got to take a couple of steps back. You know, work on yourself. And you know, and the, yes, and there's it's lots of a lot of this stuff is, is going on is karma. You know, for me, what I do, I I I'm I'm remembering who I was before. You know, and how and how I did it. What was the power source? It was love. You know, that, that's that's what it was. It was. It's love. You know, I remember many of these people. You know, in my local reality, and even you know, I uh, look at my friends list on Facebook. You know, I I do recall them. Lots of them who uh, had you know enjoyed life lifetimes with them. So we all have these uh, own perspectives from the spirit, and that's what I'm all about. And I, you know, I want to thank again for uh, Brian and everybody else to uh, be sharing these experiences with it. And that's all I have to say, Brian. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, I mean, <clears throat> speaking of love, love to me uh, brings people together, and um, I, I find it kind of cool the, the way all this has happened. I mean, I met, I met Barbara Three Crow, or we. We ha we did a show together, but then I made a comment to her in a uh, a Skype post about my birthday, saying Maya says hello, and then she goes, "Wow, how do you know about Maya?" And uh, that started our a really close friendship now that we have. Uh, and then um, <clears throat> uh, I don't know if Barbara wants to say anything about that, but <laughs> we're sort of running out of time, so I want to get through this rather quickly. And then uh, Jean Paul, you said you had some very strong inclination to connect with me right oh oh yes you have um you have really um strong um guides who are with you and they're like bugging me they're like hounding me as soon as they knew who i was yeah they're like okay you gotta talk to them now <laughs> <laughs> honestly like they were like yeah they're like really and and that's how it is when you're with spirit and with your heart you know there's no such thing as ego as you know Brian, right you know you have no ego I, I can i can i can search you now and you have no ego there's no ego anywhere with us well thank you, right? you know, well i just I'll, I'll just pop in here a little bit because uh to just to you know add a little intrigue <laughs> to talk about another time that maya uh is a star being who's been with me as long as i can remember that's why I said, ooh, how do you know about Maya? So that's uh, how we connected on that. We got really then talking really seriously. Yeah. Yeah, because I never, I never even thought to ask about this guiding angel. Like I called her Mother Earth or many different names in my life, uh, what her name was. I, I didn't think a, a, a creator being would have a name, right? <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> for some reason, I got encouraged to ask her name and then I shared it with Barbara so I what I see happening here and it's a beautiful thing is that the people who connect with the mother and the higher the source energy are being pushed to come together encouraged to come together because what we need to do <clears throat> and what I'm being told is that what what's happened is that the darkness here the the lost souls as um, uh, Daffy was telling me earlier they've they've become very powerful and uh, the, what's happened is that we've forgotten that love, it can be powerful too, but it's only going to be powerful enough to defeat the darkness here if we come together and we show that we too can be powerful. Uh, people who tend to be connected to source and, and uh, the mother tend to be modest people, tend to be people who don't run around, you know, uh, being bombastic and wanting to be leaders. They want to be like, uh, you know, helpers, uh, very, very uh, uh, modest. But we have to find a way to be strong, but at the same time not become egotistical. And it's not an easy thing to do, but this is the challenge that we face as light beings, as healers, is, is getting over this notion that we cannot be powerful um, and, and getting over this notion that we don't need to work together. Because I, I meet a lot of people who are very enlightened, but they don't have this sense that I do that we have to come together and create, as I call, the family of families. So, Daffy, what do you, what do you, what do you say about that? Um, well, uh, first of all, I 
One of the things that the grandfathers talked about, they said to never refer to the lost spirits as powerful because then you're giving your power to them. And they said, they had told me, I'm just talking about the things that they told me. They said that, um, grandfather said, said, the one that we can refer to, the only one we can refer to as being powerful is the creator. And if you think about it, if you look at the world, how many billions of people there are on the world. And so creator is everything. And he's so mass. Our tiny little problems, it's just like it takes his little pinky finger to a wipe and clean off the little problem. Uh, it's just that people uh, push away from that and, and they forgot how powerful the creator is. Even, you know, I've had elders talk to me and they said, you know, people forgot about the order of life and how how powerful the creator is, how powerful the four elements are, fire, earth, air, and water. A person can be healed by water alone. This older man, he said, if somebody had cancer and they prayed for every single drop of water that they drank, that the water spirit would cleanse them to heal them, to nourish them, that... Um, you know, uh, that they w could be healed for the, from their cancer, just from water alone. That's how powerful water is. Wa fire, earth, air, and water, they have never failed. That's why the earth is still here. And if we fail on our job, they won't fail. They'll still be here. So, you know, that's how powerful they are. And a lot of times, there has been people who would say, oh, you're very powerful, you're really powerful. And I tell them, I have no power. I don't have a reason to seek power because creator is so powerful. I'm a tiny speck on the earth and he's everything. What do I need power for? Power for because he's so powerful. He can just he can do mass things that we could never imagine if we just allow him to work through us, to come through us. If we believe in the power of the creator, then he believes in us and he believes in our journey. And he will follow us through our journey and provide us with what we need. Oh, I totally agree. Ilamaya, thank you for that. Well, I, I, I don't agree. I think that the darkness here is powerful and that we have to accept it and, and deal with it. Um, but I, we're kind of running out of time. But I think it's a, a, a maybe a, an area that we should explore further in another show because... Uh, is part of the denial that we live in uh, to think that the darkness is here here is not powerful. We, we kind of live in a dimension where the, the light and the dark are almost balanced. And I'd say right now it's actually... Yeah, it's, there's, a, there's it's disagreements. Darkness. We have to talk more about this because I don't think it's powerful. I think it exists. But if you don't believe that crater is more powerful, then you're, I think there's trouble. There's going to be trouble there. Oh, well, definitely... The, Always the light will defeat the darkness, but right now on this planet, within the hearts and minds of the, of most people, the darkness is stronger, unfortunately, and that's a big problem that we have to deal with as as a species. Yeah. What with lost people, you are in a way correct. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, the creator made this place out of love and out of uh, incredible creative capacity, but this dark energy that's here is, is very slick and very uh, convincing and it's been around for thousands of years and it's been in control for i i i'm getting six thousand years this dark energy's been here and so yeah, once you turn and once you uh, turn to creator that has no that darkness has no power over you see this absolutely. is this is the piece that well, people have to understand that absolutely yeah and we have to teach people how to how to uh, be more attracted to love than the darkness and but but yeah so jean paul it, we're almost out of time here is there anything you want to say about my comments uh no it's good we should uh you know uh re revisit it later on but i just want to say uh thanks thanks a lot for everybody to uh listen and uh, who showed up the host the hostess and uh you know all the guests uh, i just want to say you guys have a good night yeah, and I, I love you all, and I'm really so glad that we all got together. And uh, I just met Daffy today, so I'm really impressed that she had, took the time to come on the time nature. Well, here we go, folks. It's the end of the show. Uh, if if anybody wants to hang on after, we can chat a bit more. But thanks, everyone, for listening to I